But let's quickly cut across and listen in to former finance minister and senior congress leader P. Chidambaram. He is clarifying the Sushma Swaraj charge. With acrimony and ended with more acrimony on the part of BJP. Is anyone wiser at the end of the session on the issues that have caused so much debate? Yesterday, Ms. Sushma Swaraj and Mr. Arun Jaitley put up a last-ditch effort. They did everything except answer the crucial questions that arose out of Ms. Sushma Swaraj's intervention on behalf of Mr. Lalit Modi. Even as they tried to deflect the questions, some facts tumbled out. These are, one, that Ms. Sushma Swaraj intervened with the British High Commissioner on behalf of Mr. Lalit Modi at a time when his passport had been cancelled and the case was pending in the High Court. Two, that the Ministry of External Affairs has so far not appealed against the order of the High Court setting aside the cancellation of the passport. Three, that there was correspondence between the Finance Minister, India, and the Chancellor of Exchequer, UK, in which India had demanded that Mr. Lalit Modi be deported forthwith. Given these undeniable facts, did Ms. Sushma Swaraj or Mr. Arun Jaitley answer the crucial questions? The answer is no. There are basically three sets of questions, and for the record, let me repeat them. One, the minister's intervention. If Ms. Sushma Swaraj wished to help Mr. Lalit Modi on purely humanitarian grounds, why did she not advise him to apply to the Indian High Commission in London for a temporary Indian travel document valid for visiting only Portugal? Why did she not instruct the Foreign Secretary and the High Commissioner to issue a temporary travel document valid only for Portugal? Why did she keep her ministry in the dark about her intervention? Why did she think that Mr. Lalit Modi deserved to get a British travel document rather than an Indian travel document? Two, the passport case. Why has an appeal not been filed to the Supreme Court against the judgment of the High Court in the passport cancellation case? What was the advice given by the government's lawyers and the Ministry of Law on the question of filing an appeal. Who took the decision not to file an appeal? Was it the Ministry of External Affairs, or the Ministry of Finance, or the Enforcement Directorate? What were the reasons for that decision? Why have the reasons not been made public? Three, the correspondence between the ministers. Why is the government refusing to release the letters between the finance ministers of the two countries? Why are Mr. Jaitley and Ms. Swaraj selectively quoting a few words from the letters instead of releasing the full text of the letters? What has the release of the letters got to do with the investigation into alleged violations of FEMA or PMLA? How will the release of the letters prejudice the investigation or help Mr. Lalit Modi? Which ministry or authority has objected to the release of the letters, and if so, under which provision of the RTI Act. I'm afraid that the two ministers of the government have failed the government and the people. Instead of a debate, we got a diatribe. Instead of answers, we got sermons. Instead of facts, we got a fudge. If the ministers and the government think that these questions will go away, I'm afraid they will not go away. We will continue to ask them, we will continue to raise them among the people, and we will continue to demand answers. I have another short statement on something else that Ms. Swaraj said yesterday, and I'm deeply pained and anguished that she made those comments. We take strong exception to the blatantly false references made by Ms. Sushma Swaraj to the late Sri Rajiv Gandhi and alleged payments to him by Mr. Khartoki. 
I wish to ask Ms. Swaraj if she was aware of an FIR registered by the CBI into a number of persons shown as accused, including Sri Rajiv Gandhi. Was she aware of the judgment dated 4th February 2004 of Mr. Justice Kapoor of the Delhi High Court? Why did she not turn to Mr. Arun Jaitley and seek confirmation of her allegations? If she had done that, she would have got a rude shock. She would have been told who was the government's counsel in that case and who was the law minister at that time. She would have been told what the findings and conclusions of the High Court were. She would have also been told what the government, that is the Bajpai government, did after the judgment was pronounced on 4th February 2004 and until they demitted office in mid-May 2004 for three months and about ten days. Since Ms. Sushma Swaraj was either ignorant, which I find it difficult to believe, or deliberately uttering falsehoods, I wish to read a few paragraphs, namely paragraphs 3, 4, 140, and 141 subpara 1, for the benefit of Ms. Swaraj, as also the people of India. There is the truth for everyone to see. This is a judgment delivered on the 4th of February 2004 by Mr. Justice Kapoor. And this is what the judge says in paragraph 3. The public servants, Rajiv Gandhi and S.K. Bhatnagar, were also charged for having committed criminal misconduct by abusing their official position so as to gain pecuniary advantages to all of them and having taken illegal gratification for awarding the contract in favor of Bofors. Para 4. To the pointed inquiry made by this court as to the evidence showing the receipt of bribe money penny by the public servants, either themselves or through agents, Mr. Mukul Roadgi, learned additional Solicitor General of India, appearing for CBI, candidly and fairly said that till date there was none but CBI is on the trail to gather such evidence. This frank concession goes to the credit of Mr. Rohargi, who, though during arguments, heavily relied upon the circumstances. Para 6. Result of 13 long years of investigation by the CBI, a premier investigating agency of the country, and three years investigative journalism, during which period large number of officers of CBI hopped to foreign countries every now and then to collect evidence against public servants but returned empty-handed as till date there is no evidence to show that public servants had taken bribe in awarding the contract of guns to Messrs. Bofors and Co. Paragraph 140 In the result the public servants are completely absolved of all the allegations leading to the offences punishable 